I would like to present uh, some of our last activities about miniaturization of historization for planetary exploration. In fact, centered on Mars exploration. Uh, we belong to INTA. Uh, as we have two talks, we produce the one talk. Uh, I will speak during 25 minutes, and I will have some institutional presentation just to introduce what is INTA because Spain is very far from Russia. So you know that we are in the year 2011 is the friendship uh, uh, year between Russia and Spain. So we need to be very clear this year. And therefore, uh, we organize with Roscosmos in Madrid, the State Week in Madrid, and where when Professor Lev Seveni uh, invited us to stay here. Okay, uh, INTA is the Spanish institution devoted to make uh, technology uh, for aerospace. It's 70 years old story. This is very, very old story. And uh, like a Star Wars, you know. So uh, INTA is, is a public institution, depends on defense ministry. In Spain, we have no space agency. There is no space agency. INTA is an institution like ICI. Uh, we have also science, technology, etc. But we have also aeronautics. In, in, it was founded in 1942, and the A of INTA is stands for aeronautics, and after uh, Gagarin, it uh, came to aerospace. Okay? Well, INTA is devoted to activity. We have a budget of uh, 130 million euros a year. Uh, most of the technology, uh, most of our activity is related to technological development and also we have the space technology. We have a small uh, basic research. Most of this basic research focuses on our uh, for space astrobiology center. It's a center that we have in, in connection with the National Research Council. In, uh, in space, uh, we have our headquarters in Torreform. This is the old American uh, aircraft base. This is a uh, two, three kilometers uh, space. And we have several satellite tracking stations over uh, the continent in Spain and the Ca in Canary Island. Okay, INTA uh, has uh, different facilities and our heritage in space started with some rockets up to 300 kilometers with different payloads to up to uh, 50 kilograms of payloads. Also, we have the, our balloons campaigns with our friends of Eggman's. We have uh, the old science and the Italian Space Agency. And uh, our uh, stronger activity now in space uh, on Earth are the satellite tracking stations. I don't know why Spain is a very good place for uh, putting all these stations. And we have this, uh, for example, in Canary Island, in the south of the Grand Canaria Island. Uh, we have uh, this uh, station is a uh, heritage from the Apollo uh, program. Also, we have uh, the NASA Deep Space Network, uh, one of the nodes, you know, on the Earth, there are every 120 degrees. You have, uh, you need to have one station when the uh, Earth rotates. So uh, uh, the spacecraft in the far, uh, in the deep space, uh, get always linked, okay? So uh, NASA established in, in, in near Madrid a, a two stations in Fresnadilla and in Robledo. And now the Robledo is the Madrid a network a complex a, for the deep space network of, of NASA and is on inter territory and operated by inter staff. Also ISA has a, the deep space network node of ISA in plus Madrid. So uh, we are in a very good relation with the, with the deep space uh, research and investigation. Most of all the missions of NASA pass over these antennas, uh, even with the first Martian mission, uh, the Luna mission, etc. Okay, uh, also INTA is full of facilities to test everything. Everything less radiation. So to make radiation, we need to go to other, other facilities. Uh, we have all the all the features that you want to test on our payload. You have also there the facilities, and we have also large centers just to test either the triple jet engine, our, our astrobiology center, or different. If, uh, we have planes for making tests uh, on on etc. Well. Uh, uh, 
with our last satellites, we have developed a space ground segments just to detect, uh, for example, our nanosats in or, or microsats in orbit. Or now we are uh, developing a very large, uh, 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 a, a very large uh, ground segment for the two new satellites of Spain related to with the radar and optical of the National uh, Air Observation Program. And finally, in the payload and instrumentation, INTA is working in many programs related with ESA, also with, with Russia and with, with, uh, with, with NASA. For example, now in the Mars Science Laboratory, one station, meteorological station, has been developed at INTA with the Spanish industry at our astrobiology center. Okay. In satellites, uh, we uh, develop a, a small satellite for technological demonstration. We, uh, actually, we have in orbit two nanosats. The this launched uh, seven years ago, and this launched uh, three years ago. These are 20 kilogram satellites uh, with a half a meter of diameter, where we test all our technologies. Well, and now I start with my with my, my presentation. Miniaturized instrumentation for planetary exploration. Well, uh, I used to put the abstract also in the presentation because so in the when you will have the presentation you will have everything at the same time. We have developed it uh, uh, in, the, in the framework of the Mednet Mars Recursion Mission. It is a mission between three countries: Russia, Vietnam, and Spain. In Russia. You are Iki and Lavoshki. Well, uh, Spain has the uh, uh, Spain has uh, uh, some uh, activities related with science and related with technology. The science activities will be told us by uh, told to us by Professor Luis Vázquez when I finish. And uh, in the technology developed by, by Inca, we have first a magnetometer. We have a solar spectral radiant sensor and some optical wireless uh, link technologies. Later will be a, a talk of uh, Diego Fernandez of Artemia. It's a company working with the Universidad Carlos III de Madrid on a, a iPhone dust uh, sensor as well. Uh, we want to develop miniaturized instrumentation. And this miniaturized instrumentation is an instrumentation that uh, we define with a high density of integration. It's not a small, <coughs> it's a small but very integrated, with very reduced mass. We're speaking about instruments of 45 grams, 70 grams, the optical wireless modules 10 grams in, in, this, in this range, with very low power. This small station has very reduced power. So uh, we uh, uh, take uh, advantage of every uh, microwatt inside the, our, our instrumentation. And uh, are also uh, elements with autonomy and functionality, full of functionality. The autonomy is because all of them has a FPGAs, as is like a small computer with sensing or actuating capabilities all introduced in very small size and with a very low mass. And functionality, for example, our magnetometer has six magnetometer and three accelerometer in 45 grams. I will tell you more late, uh, later about the, these capabilities. Well, this is INTA headquarters and here is the building where we are manufacturing uh, all these things. In the payloads and instrumentation area. You see, in case of forest, uh, different buildings, buildings for uh, a, a drop tower. We have here a drop tower. We have here a, 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 a canyons for, for testing uh, stations against a, a, a wall. We have here a electromagnetic compatibility chamber, etc. It's full of every, every building has a, a facility. Well, and in our building, in our uh, wall, uh, in our meeting room, we have this. It's a very large wall, and this is, in, in fact, uh, the solar system, because we have this target, exploring the solar system, but uh, being new. 
When we arrive to make instrumentation for uh, planetary uh, missions, all of you have been done this for many, many years. So we have no, no need to be there. So we thought, okay, if we want to be competitive, we, we need to, to work with very small things, with uh, very limited, with uh, a lot of functionality. Because every gram that you spend uh, uh, of, uh, in going to the planet is, is a problem. So we try to be very careful with mass and with power. Okay, so our strategy, in fact, is a problem of technology. The technology is what limits you everything. You can have very nice ideas, but at the end, you need technology to materialize these ideas. Of course, I am not speaking about the large science, the great science, because the great science, with a 40 grand instrument, you cannot make great science. But maybe, maybe you can uh, make a small science. Maybe you can make precursor for the future great science. So I mean that this is a problem of technology. And the first problem that we find with the technology is the electronics. Electronics are the building blocks of every instrument, of every space sensor. So you know that what is ITER? ITAR means International uh, Treatment of Arbit Regula Regulation. So with, with the ITAR, we have a very, very great problem in the Western countries, is that uh, when one component is supposed that is able to withstand radiation of going to the space, so we can use only, but with a very heavy problem of documentation, etc. And you have a lot of problem if you are going to fly this with uh, some Chinese uh, rockets or, or uh, wh whatever. So for us, ITA, even if we uh, align, is a great problem. So uh, some years ago, we decided at Europe trying to pass over ITA. Of course, ITA is technology, and we cannot uh, pass over some ITA components. But at the end, when the normal electronics industry is manufacturing everything, every year you find very, very nice components on the catalogs full of very nice specifications. And even the manufacturers don't know if these components are good for very, very low temperatures, if are good for radiation, etc. So we told this to our designers, to all our engineers. Choose the components electronics that are the best for you. And we will put the, all the money needed to test if these are good or not for our space uh, exploration. So this code means commercial of the shelf. It's full, the market every year is full of com new components for the iPhones, for the, for the computers, for the uh, auto automotive, etc. So we are trying to select the best components to make the best uh, elements. And we start to have our own libraries. We bought thousand of these components, 2,000 elements of the same batch. And then we test if it is OK to our library. If this is not OK, we have 2,000 of uh, very cheap components, not for a space. And we start to make this with different uh, screening elements. Or, for example, if we are thinking about Mars, with very, very heavy uh, test. Test from minus 140 to plus 40 degrees over 600, 600 uh, cycles. So we test this with all our components that all the components that we want to use in the o, 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 our a small station with, with magnet. So we start to learn about these components. And we know that this component maybe was not intended for this, because the manufacturer don't spend the money on making this test. These test, tests are very expensive. But we are inter and we can make. And so we are learning step by step, and we are having our library. This is our strategy. The core of our strategy in electronics. 
The second, if you have the electronics, you need the sensors because you go to the space to make something. Just to test, to sense, to, to sense. And so, for example, these are all the anisotropic magnetoresistors of Honeywell. We buy everything and we start to test. These are amazing ones. And before they uh, classified ITAR, etc., we have maybe this 2,000 elements, and we have a magnetoresistor. If these are very nice, for, for 20 years of, of, of sensor. And we try to test all of this. Also, we made a custom uh, elements. For example, this is a manufacturer that uh, is not, we are not allowed to say with, with photodiodes, with a, a special filters also, because uh, for our solar irradiant sensors on, on Mars, we uh, are segmenting, segmenting the, the, the spectrum and also having some in the ultraviolet band. If we are going to, act, uh, to land on Mars with a penetrator with 500 Gs, we cannot go with a monochromator with mo mobile parts. We need a special sensor. And therefore, we need this special sensor with a special filters, and this is, uh, a, again, uh, a way of, of getting, procuring uh, this kind of, of sensor. Okay, after getting all these elements, you need to test in extreme environments. All the manufacturers will tell you, put on the table a specification always up to the, the military range, in temperature, uh, low temperature, high temperature, but no more. If you want to go to, to these planets, you need to move on the temperature uh, axis. But manufacturers normally don't give you any information about air radiation, even total ionizing dose, even a displacement damage by particles. So we spend, again, a lot of uh, money in testing this, the radiation axis, and also the temperature axis. Of course, space has many other, other factors, as, as you know, know very well. These uh, photographs are photodiodes and emitters that we put in, 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 in front of proton beams in different European uh, facilities. Because uh, in optoelectronics, the displacement damage is one of the major uh, problems. And so we test up to, uh, ten to, to 10 to the 13 proton per square centimeter, which is uh, uh, higher like this. And finally, the, our four steps, if you have your libraries, so you of components and sensors, you are in the position of making miniaturized instruments. And these are the small instruments that we are manufacturing for our small satellites. These two are in orbit. Now this is going to be launched uh, next, uh, at the end of this year. This is a triple CubeSat, but it's not a university CubeSat. It's totally optical inside, no hardness. All the information is optical inside, and all the computation is distributed. No central pro uh, uh, professor. We have all the information distributed with this optical module that we have uh, between all different floors. So these miniaturized elements are one of, uh, of our uh, instruments for this uh, small platform. And what about uh, MedNet? In MedNet, we have the Russians, Finland, and Spain. And INTA is leading a, a large consortium inside Spain. Luis Vázquez, Professor Luis Vázquez will speak now about science, and later uh, Diego Fernández from Parquimia will speak about uh, these, these technologies. Okay? But INTA is making all these, uh, these technologies, are, are these instruments, are the ones that I mentioned in the abstract. Magnetometers of 45 grains, solar irradiant sensors with 26 different channels, spectral channels with 90, uh, 90 grams, and optical wireless links between the, the extensible boom and the, and the deck. And this Merex is the, our strategic program for all this uh, that I am telling to you. 
These are photos of our instruments in the uh, qualifying models. Uh, flying models will be delivered by February of next year. You see the degree of integration of the solar irradiation sensor. It's amazing the, the, the complexity inside. So with this element, we have a lot of functionality to uh, measure the, the sun irradiance on the surface, different gases traces. This is a magnetometer. Here we have six magnetometers are very far from the electronics because the electronics uh, has the, the uh, ferromagnetic encapsulation. Okay? And these are the optical wireless modules. That. But uh, normally, this is not enough because you saw this magnetometer, you saw this optical wireless module like this. It's not enough. You need to make ACs. So another strategic area that we are uh, working with is trying to make ACs to remove some of these electronics in order to remove all this uh, electromagnetic noise. This is the magnetic noise that we have in the magnetometer. So we need to uh, remove this to make a smaller magnetometer. Or in the optical uh, wireless links between the deck and the top of the boom with the solar irradiance sensor, we need to make ASICs to reduce the size of these elements. And ASICs, our optical wireless ASICs, has been just a manufacturer mixed signal, signal ASIC with a uh, standard technology. Mass is not a problem of rotation. Mass is a problem of temperature. Okay? And uh, we have the second version of this now, and uh, we are uh, working in this direction. We try to go to uh, uh, qualified uh, manufacturers, but at the end, uh, they wanted one million euros for the design, one million euros for the manufacturing. And at the end, the ASIC was not like ASIC. What, I have to sign every, for every ASIC I got. So I say, no, we will try to make this three years, four years, I don't mind. I, we will reach our uh, target. Okay. Six step. If you in the space, if you don't fly, you are nothing. You are nobody. Okay. So you need to, to test in orbit. What's happening with this? This is the penetrator going to us, and this shot is enormous. So we need to test this. This is a cannon at Inter to launch a uh, bushes. We launch bushes against the wings of the planes. Instead of the bushes, we put inside our magnet instrumentation to launch against this wall and we test everything or the shaker or the magnetic field or the electromagnetic compatibility or the shock or the thermal vacuum etc also we have the we are lucky because we have a, our own platform to, to go to space to this small nanosat and we have some of them in orbit uh, giving us the feedback to see if we are do, uh, uh, working well. And the last step, if you have everything and you have the experience and the reliability demonstrated and enough heritage, then you are ready to travel to the planet. And this is what, what we want to, to make with, 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 with all of you. Going with the, this precursor of the future Mars net, just to, to test if we are able to survive to this impact, to the entrance, to the to the space trip, and later to, to survive and, and to, to make it. Not very great science with these very small elements, it's very difficult to make great science. But going to Mars with, 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 with this, we call MEGA. MEGA is the Spanish participation here. MEGA are the, are the witches in north of Spain. Okay, we have a national lemma, we are going to put the Spanish flag on Mars. Okay, in order to get the money from, from the politicians, if not, you don't get the money. Okay, and this is just to finish a, 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 a film made, made by you of how the methods are going to be deployed inside Mars. into the atmosphere
it is not so so that remove the, the cover and you have here the, the antenna and the some instrumentation over here this was all to put a magnetometer and this is uh, the the ET the Lawashi ET and FMA. so our target uh, as countries Mars next 2018 I heard the left Seleni okay maybe it will be will be there so it's important to, to have a all together in this because the uh, distributed exploration of Mars is really important. Not if you go with a rover to a place and stay there, this is really important. But Mars is a world with an atmosphere. You need to measure in everywhere, every, in many places, to have distributed observation. So therefore it's, this is the key the key question of, of this. I was speaking one month ago with China, China people, and China people, they told me that they are trying to imitate this. So, let's see if we can uh, work on Mars Net 2018 in Riyadh in short time. Thank you very much. Thank you.